So now I'm gonna give you my pre-shutter release split second checklist, or as we like to call it, the Hurley headshot system. What the first thing I have to do is I have to construct, obviously I've gotta set up my light and put the person in the lighting, right? Then the first thing I'm doing is I'm telling them what to do with their body. So Sheila, you're in the perfect position. Are you too close to the lights? I think you can take a tiny half an inch back. Right there, perfect. Body is composed. You're facing straight towards me. I like that. Um, you can just drop your arms by your sides. Once your body is where you want it to be, it doesn't have to move. This, this by the way, this is all done. This is pre-shutter, split second. This is in split seconds. This should take you a split second to do. Get the body in position. Once the body in, is in position, then you position the, the face. Believe it or not, humans can move their head and neck independently of their body. I know we don't do it much. Normally we, we, we you know, we change our shoulders like that. Like we're not, we're not like, we're, we're not moving. We're usually moving the same way our shoulders move, right? Well, when you're taking a picture of somebody, you can move their shoulders and then move their face. Like doing the 11 to one move. You know, these are the things that you want to be able to do. Right now, I'm going to do a, what I consider a head-on headshot. So whenever I start with people, I always start with the head-on headshot, which is stand straight. I'm going to shoot, shoot you straight at you. Very simple, straight on, just look straight in my camera. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to bring your forehead towards the camera a little bit to accentuate your jawline. Yes, like that, and chin up slightly. Perfect. Don't move. That's it. So that's step two. Once the head is in position, you don't want them moving, then you want to do a hair and clothing scan because now the hair has moved. Unless you're a guy and you have short hair, the hair probably doesn't move. But when, with women, the hair is a big deal and it moves. The clothing also moves. With a guy, if they get their chin out and they got a collared shirt on, and the coll generally guys buy collars that are too big for them, you get the chin out, all of a sudden you got a big gap in the back of the collar. You got to pull the jacket forward. I do a little move sometimes where I stick a paper towel behind the neck to fill, to jam that collar tight up against the front of the front of the neck. So you got to look at that and you won't be able to look at that until the neck is in position, the head and neck is in position. Once the head and neck are in position, now you've got the body and the head and neck, the person's not moving. Now you got to do a, you've got the hair and clothing scan going on. All of a sudden the hair and clothing looks good. Guess what you have to do? You have to scan for lighting. So I've got to stop. This is the moment that you guys, I know you're making a lot of mistakes. You don't stop and look at the lighting. I got to look at the lighting. I got to look at the air. I see a hair potential issue. Don't move. I'll do it. I've got, I've got, to, I either have my, my hair person, my makeup artist come in and do this. Don't move. I just want that off the chin. I'll do this. And this can be a split second where I'll dive in and do that. Now the hair's good. Cl clothing's easy. It's just a little pink top. She, I'm checking the lighting, the lighting's perfect, the jawline's out, the body's in position. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna compose. Compo composition is key, we know that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compose. So I usually always keep my camera height on my tripod at the level of the chin, right about here. Now, years ago, I used to shoot with the, the the camera at the level of the, of the center of the ears. I've been lowering over the years in my old age, and I really like it at the right around the chin height. I don't like it to go too far below that, but I like to. I've been bring, if you look at my old imagery, you see that I was shooting on an angle down on people more, and now I'm shooting more straight at them, and I really like that better. It empowers people, and I'm all about empowerment when I'm shooting, so it's really important. So I'm at the chin level. So I'll even, if I need to, I will measure the height of the chin of the human being, which is about, with your chin down, you're at 55 and a half inches. I like the, the camera to end the center of the lens to somewhere end up between the bottom of the lip and the bottom of the chin. So we, here's your sweet spot in there. So 55 and a half inches, I have not, let me check. And I am at exactly 55 and a half inches. So on my camera height. Now, when your chin goes down, guess what I have to do? I gotta lower my, go chin down a little bit. Get the chin out, chin down. I can lower my camera a little bit because I knew I was there. I'm focusing on the front. I'm gonna take a shot 
Hair looks pretty good. It's a little unruly. I did my hair and clothing scan again. These little puppies. I'm this picky. It doesn't, uh, it's much easier for me to dive in here and take two seconds to get the hair where I want it rather than my hand retoucher have to retouch any hairs that are out of place. You still haven't even addressed the person's face. Once you've got the composition down, now they're in the perfect position. Now you can tell them, give them a direction to do that will address their face. Generally with me, I'm this is where I'm throwing in a misdirection or a micro expression or something just to get them to react to what I'm saying. So it could be very simply, and if this is where I want you, where you want to start, you could start right here. You get them in the position, they're all set, they're right there, and you could say, Tiny smile, little squinch. And they do that, and you fire. You got yourself a shot. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to repeat that again, but I don't want you to take the same shot twice. So I want you to move some aspect of that. It could be they're perfect, you like their position, their face looks great, I don't want to move them, I'm just going to recompose. And you just recompose your camera. This is why it's a split second chick list. Now you're just recomposing the camera, and boom, you get to the point where you got to say something and you say something else and boom, you got your shot. If you create laughter, they're starting in a position that's good. They're going to laugh. They're going to move. They're, you're going to have to teach them about what to do with their face when they move and laugh. So as you watch this, I want you to watch how I'm, watch exactly what I'm doing, how I'm positioning the body. Then I'm positioning the head. Then I'm doing a hair and clothing scan and watching my lighting. Then I'm composing. Once I'm composed, then all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. It's at that moment and only that moment that I say something silly or I say something to direct their face or I say something inappropriate, whatever it is. It happens at the moment that they're in the right position. If I say it before or hair's out of place, I don't have a shot. Why would I do that? Right? Then, I, then I've shot it. I've captured it. I'm done. I go back to square one. I start over again. I start to work through the system again. Bring that forehead out. Squinch the eyes up. Oh, you just did a really cute face. Do that again. Oh, I love that. That was super cute. Chin down a little bit. Can you go, can you go strange and unusual? Go. Oh, strange. strange and unusual. That was pretty weird. Stand up straight. Good. That's it. Chin down and out. There you go. Good. Really good. Good. Give me a look like you're standing waist deep in a tub of butter. Freeze there. Now drop your left shoulder towards that light. Lean into it. Lean into that freeze right there. The body. Nose goes towards me. Actually, go nose that way. Let's see what this does. We'll, we'll slide that light you a little bit. Look less concerned for your well-being. <laughs> I'll wait for the I'll wait for the for the teeth to come out if he doesn't let them rip. Nose slightly towards me. Now jam your forehead out towards me like this. Like that. Oh my gosh, you take every direction. Well, can you try squinching your eyes up a little bit like this? Look at my eyes. Yeah, just a little bit. Beautiful. Uh, the, the process is you're trying stuff. You're throwing against the wall to see what sticks. So if I know I like a position, it's like I know on me, this camera is shooting me, right? I know I like the body at 11, the face to one. So it'd be something like this, right? Let's say I'm shooting myself and I, well, Let's say I'm shooting somebody like me and I like them body position like this. I'm going to shoot around that for at least 20 shots in each look that I take. So maybe I get them there and I shoot 20 shots, but I move them subtly. I turn the shoulders a little bit less, not too far. Maybe I change this. Maybe I drop a shoulder. Maybe I untilt the camera. So what I do is I get to this point where I've got the 20 shots I like and maybe at the end I'm going, okay, now I can move them. So I just need big laughter. I crack them up and they get out of position, they laugh, and they come back into position. I'm like, okay, now reset it and turn a little bit this way. Turn this way, drop this, turn this, try this this way. Wait, let me try this lighting. I'll change the lighting a little bit. And then I'll like something there and I'll shoot 20 shots like that, around that, and not move them much. That's all you're really doing. You're experimenting the entire time and you're keeping them on their toes. The point is to keep them moving, make them think that you're constantly getting pictures that could work for them. You want to build your momentum and your timing on this has to be key. Lights are bright, flashes are going off. You don't want to keep that person in there any longer than you have to and you don't want to be slow and chimping 
and, and you're timing off and not moving the person. Sometimes I'll shoot a picture just to keep the flow of the session moving. Think about your flow. Don't get that person caught in there without the flow moving. If the flow is getting cut off, just shoot pictures even if the, even if the expression's not good. You know you're going to delete them. Then you know they're not, you know, you're going to be your go-tos, but you're going to keep the flow going in the session and you're going to give some positive reinforcement that they're doing a good job. Not too much positive reinforcement, but some positive reinforcement. You're going to give them feedback. This system is what you're going to be using the whole time. You always have to go back to square one, which is moving the body, moving the, then square two, moving the face, square three, lighting, hair and clothing scan, four, compose your shot, five, do something that elicits a facial reaction, six, shoot, seven, repeat. That's it. Hurley headshot system, guys.